Hi everyone. My name is Mahendra Shinde and now I am about to demonstrate how to use RBAC in Kubernetes. I have split this demo into three different segments. Number one, we will see how to create a new user and generate a digital certificate for the new user. Number two, we will see how we can update our Kubernetes context and add a new user to it. And then number three, we'll see how we can authorize this new user to perform certain operations like get, list, and watch on all the Kubernetes components or resources. Now, before we proceed with these uh, particular demo, uh, please note there are three prerequisites. Number one, you should have Docker Desktop installed in your system. So, for example, in my system, Docker Desktop is already installed and you can check which version of Docker Desktop I'm using right now. I'll just open the Docker desktop uh, dashboard. So you will notice Docker desktop is up and running. This is the info panel. On the lower left corner, you will notice there are two indicators, Docker engine and Kubernetes, both are up and running. Just to show you this, if you go to the settings button here on the Docker desktop dashboard, here you will find an option to switch Kubernetes on or off. So I have already enabled Kubernetes here on my my machine. So I already have the required setup. I have Docker desktop and Kubernetes enabled inside Docker desktop. Another, another requirement that you have that you need here is Windows subsystem for Linux with Ubuntu bash. Why am I actually recommending this? Because it provides some necessary tools or utilities commands that I'm going to use later on. So here it is. You can open it directly in its own terminal or you can launch it from inside VS Code. VS Code is our th third requirement. It's a text editor, a smart text editor with an integrated terminal. Fine. So let's get started. I have created a detailed walkthrough for this demo at my public repository. And let me share with you the repository URL. This is the repository, by the way, you can see it on my screen on the left hand side. And this is the URL. It's a public repository. That means uh, you should be able to access it anytime. You don't even have to sign up on GitHub to access this repository. As soon as you visit, you will get this uh, readme file. And you can notice the readme file here has already mentioned the prerequisite. And this is the part one I'm going to do now. So what I will do now for part one, I'm going to use Ubuntu bash, as you can see on my screen here. Let's make more space. So this is my terminal and here very first thing that I'm going to do now is if you look at, refer to step number one, I will, I will have to create a new certificate. Now here I'm creating a new certificate for a user called Mahindra. So let me just run this command here, press enter and let's wait for it. Just to verify, I will use ls command to check if it has created the required key file. By the way, do you know that you can even display the contents of this particular uh, private key? Just use cat command to display the contents. This is my private key, by the way. Yeah, that's fine. What is next is you now need to create the certificate signing request. It's because Kubernetes doesn't just accept all kind uh, any random digital certificate or RSA key. No, it requires your certificate to be authorized or signed by Kubernetes certificate signing controller. So here I'm going to create a new certificate signing request. This will create another binary file uh, with extension dot CSR. You can I can show you the content of the CSR file. OK, so this is certificate request. Please remember all these contents are base 64 encoded contents actually for the certificate request. And these are just the markers. Yeah, that's fine. So certificate request is successfully created. And if you notice a few more things here for creating the certificate request, you need to provide the private key that we have generated earlier, then provide the uh, the name that you expect for the certificate signing request and the subject line. 
Now, whatever you type here in subject line, this forward slash CN equal to name Mahindra. Now, this is going to be your Kubernetes username, Mahindra. So, you will have to note it down or you will have to specify a different name if you want your Kubernetes user to be given a different name. Use that name here. Fine. So, with this, now I have got two different files, a private key and certificate signing request. Usually, if you use OpenSSL, OpenSSL creates certificate signing request .csr file and then there is another command you can use to sign the certificate. But here in case of Kubernetes, in order to sign the Kubernetes certificates, the digital certificate for authentication, you will have to use, you will have to define a YAML file that will create a certificate signing request for Kubernetes controller. So I will show you how the file will look alike. There is a YAML file I have already created in this particular repository. Okay, so if you just scroll up here and if you go to the manifest folder here in my GitHub repository, you will find there is a manifest file sign request.yml. Okay, so you can refer to that file. Anyway, so here you will see this is my YAML file already open here. Did you notice that all the other contents are okay, but here I have written or I have used a placeholder character. I have used a placeholder called .csr. It's basically an environment variable I have placed here. So before I can actually make a request, somehow I have to take the contents of mahindra.csr file and put them here in place of this $csr placeholder. This is just a placeholder. And there is a trick I'm going to use now. It's already mentioned in my doc in my uh, document here. So, and this is the reason why I'm using Ubuntu Bash or Windows subsystem for Linux. You will notice this command over here, it's a very popular and very widely used command line utility on Linux platform, SED, or people call it SED. It can be used to, you know, replace a content or replace one or two words or maybe entire line inside a document, a text document with a new one. So here, what this command is actually going to do, it's going to replace this placeholder with actual contents of mahindra.csr file. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I guess I didn't declare the variable. I will have to first declare the variable. So let's go back here. I have to first take this CSR file and convert it into a base64 encoded value. Here it is. You can even confirm this. If you write echo dot dollar CSR, you will see the entire certificate placed in here. So what I will do next now, now that I have the base64 encoded uh, certificate with me, I will now use this command, set command and use it here. Oh, wait. Oh, the, the file is actually in a different folder. So let me do one thing. Let's go to manifest and, and run this command again. Because this file is not in current directory, it was in a different directory. So you will have to do the adjustment. If your file is in the same directory, you don't have to do CD and then go to the manifest folder. Fine. So once I have done that, you will notice one thing. The content of file is automatically changed. It now shows request and this is the base64 encoded value. And you will notice VS code is so smart that it is actually giving me a hint uh, that this line actually contains uh, X509 certificate or digital certificate. That's fine. That's great. So now let's apply this. Now, just like any other Kubernetes manifest, you will have to apply this manifest. Now, this will actually formally create a certificate signing request and send it to Kubernetes internal certificate signing authority, which is basically a pod running inside your Kubernetes cluster. And this is applicable for Docker desktop Kubernetes cluster. And it is also applicable or available in uh, cloud hosted or managed Kubernetes cluster like AKS or EKS. You can try this demo on those managed clusters as well instead of Docker desktop, by the way. So you will notice the certificate signing request is already created. Now the request is already valid for one entire day. That means 
within this 86,400 seconds, somebody has to approve this request. Otherwise, it will automatically get rejected. I have given enough time actually. You can reduce it to let's say 30 minutes or one hour if you want. Let's do one thing, let's approve it. Now, in order to do this approval, you must be logged in into your Kubernetes cluster with a cluster admin privileges. Don't worry about that. In Docker desktop, your default user is already admin user. Okay, and even in Kuban, uh, AKS as well, your default user is admin. Yeah, so let us approve the request now. If you look at my screen, uh, I've just run a command kubectl certificate approve Mahindra. Now Mahindra is the name of uh, certificate signing request and the request is now approved. You should get this type of a message. Okay, approved. It means this user can now log in into Kubernetes cluster. And with this, my part one is complete. So let's do uh, a small verification in here. Uh, yeah, fine. That verification will do later. Now that certificate is signed, we need to get the public key or we need to get the CRT file, certificate file. How do we extract the certificate file? Now for this, this is the script I'm going to run here. As of now, if I do ls, wait a second. You will notice right now, right now, wait, I guess I'm using a wrong character here. Yeah. Right now you will notice I have got .csr file and .key file. .csr was my certificate signing request and .key was my private key. Now we need to get the public key and to get the public key, the dot, uh, .crt file, what I will do now, I will now run this command here to extract this key. Let's keep the key outside the manifest folder. kubectl get csr mahindra hyphen o output will be json path and then I will be extracting the contents of the public key. Uh, which is from status certificate field by default as usual whenever you see any kubernetes manifest file you will notice all the digital certificates or secrets are always encoded in base64 by default so we need to use B base64 hyphen d to uh, the uh, uh, extract the value or decode the value if I now do ls command, you will notice that other than mahindra.key, now I have got mahindra.crt. Now this is the public key that you need to use when you log in. Okay, this is the public key. Now this is a signed certificate and this certificate can be used to authenticate on Kubernetes cluster because Kubernetes cluster itself has authorized this key to be used for authentication purpose. And with this, my part one is complete. Okay, fine. So let's move on to the next part, part two, which is where I will do an authentication with this new user. Now, before we proceed, let me show you my existing uh, Kubernetes configuration. If you use command kubectl config view, it will give you a view of your Kubernetes configuration. So to show you this, uh, wait a second, looks like I need to just repeat the command again. You will notice this is my Kubernetes cluster configuration file or configuration file. This is the cluster name. Docker desktop is my cluster name. There is a default context called Docker desktop context and Docker desktop context is also my current context. And there is a default user called Docker desktop user. Let's update this now. What I will do now is I will use uh, or I will create a new, let's say, user inside here. So this is the command I'm going to run here. This time my command is to create or to add a new set of credentials to my Kubernetes configuration file. I'm trying to add a new user whose name is Mahindra and instead of password, this particular user will present a public key and a private key for authentication purpose. My public key is mahindra.crt and my private key is mahindra.key. And along with that, I also have to specify that I want those keys to be included in the configuration file. 
So let's see what happens. You will get a message saying user Mahindra is set. Let's now view the config file again. Did you notice any change? You will notice in this config file a new section or a new user is added user Mahindra with the public and private key. That's great. That means new user is updated. But unfortunately, you still need one more component. You need to create a new context for this user. So let's see how to create a context now. This is the command you will use for creating the context. kubectl config set context reader. I'm going to give it a new unique name, reader context, where name of my cluster is Docker desktop. Name of the user, however, is Mahindra. By the way, you can also add one more property here, double hyphen namespace, and you can also specify which namespace this user should work on by default. Right now, I'm not doing that. Let's check the updated configuration now. Now, updated Kubernetes configuration, you will notice there is a new user called Mahindra and there is a new context called reader context. Okay, name of the new context is reader with this cluster with this new user. Let's do one thing now, kubectl config and get context. You will notice there are two contexts and Docker desktop is the default context right now. Whereas reader context is where Mahindra will be the user. Let's do one thing. Let's see whether I have required privileges. Right now I have logged in with Docker desktop user which has all the privileges. So let us check. Can I get pod? Current user that is Docker desktop user has admin privileges and because of that this user can get pods. This user can get services. Rather, this user can even create pods and services. For everything I'm getting a re response, I'm getting yes. Let's change the context. kubectl config use context reader. Now let us switch to reader context. Now that I have switched to reader context, you can notice now in get context reader is the selected context now you will see the asterisk here and let us check whether this reader context has required privileges to create pod answer is no do i have at least privileges to get the pod and answer is still no i have successfully created a user and i am able to authenticate that user but yet i still don't have permissions for the users i, I have not implemented the authorization part Authorization part is something that is missing right now. So how do we take care of authorization now? In order to take care of authorization, we'll do one thing. We'll go and uh, we'll do the authorization part in part three. This is part three where we will do the authorization. Okay. Now it's easy. Now authorization part is relatively easy. What you need here is you need to create another Kubernetes manifest. You need another Kubernetes manifest uh, that will allow you to, you know, create a new cluster role. Now, there are two types of roles, a normal role, ROLE role, which is used for namespace scoped roles, like a user in a namespace can perform these, these, these operations, whereas cluster role allows user to have privileges across number of namespaces. Here, this is my sample file you can access it from the github uh, repository now to make it easier here i have already included it here this is the new role i'm talking about a role called reader cluster role now this is a cluster role so you will notice the kind attribute here i have mentioned this is a cluster role name of the role is cluster reader api version api group i have not mentioned anything so it's applicable to all of them resources i have specified asterisk all resources and the operations on those resources I am allowing only the get list and watch operations no any other operations so let's try to deploy this now my files are created in manifest folders so let's go to the manifest folder and then kubectl apply hyphen f and the name of this file is reader cluster role oh wait a second I'm missing an extension for this file oh wait something wrong in here 
yeah i have currently logged in as a mahindra user which doesn't have required privileges let's do one thing let's switch back to docker desktop user why docker desktop user because docker desktop user is a admin user and this user docker desktop user being an admin user has privileges to create new cluster rules now done cluster role created but nowhere here it mentions that this role is applied to mahindra user how to do that there is another document another yaml file cluster role binding now role binding is the same document for normal role and cluster role both what you need to do is create an artifact create a resource called role binding resource specify the name specify the subject in subject you have to provide whom you are assigning this role you can assign this role to a user or to a service account here we are assigning it to a user name of the user is mahindra and the role reference here this is a cluster role and name of the cluster role is cluster reader so just like last time let's try kubectl apply hyphen f reader cluster role binding dot yml this will create the role binding and it's done i have assigned my new user require permissions to perform the get list and watch let's let's test them now kubectl auth can i get pod oh wait i need to first switch let us switch to the reader context so now i have logged in into kubernetes as a mahindra user new user and with the new user let me check if i can get the pod answer is yes can i get the service answer is yes but can i create a new one answer is no do you know why it is saying answer no for creating a service for that just refer back to the rules that we have created here reader cluster role if you pay attention here the verb section sim simply says that you can get you can list and you can watch you cannot perform any other operations that's it about kubernetes rbac please try this demo use this walkthrough on your docker desktop kubernetes cluster to understand rbac okay and uh, in case if you people uh, if, if you want me to create another video on another type of kubernetes cluster let's say for example same things can be applied on aks as well as your kubernetes service cluster or eks cluster elastic kubernetes service cluster or any other version of kubernetes please let me know okay that's it for today thank you